Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with integers, which means we're going to solve a Diophantine equation. So a and b are integers, and we're given that a plus 3ab plus 2b equals 42, and we're going to be solving for a plus b, which means we're going to find the values of a and b, and then from there we're going to find a plus b, or we can leave that part to you guys totally. Anyways, let's get started with the original equation. We have a plus 3ab plus 2b is equal to 42. Now to solve this equation, we can basically do a couple different things. First of all, one of the things that is probably, in my opinion, easier, the easier one, is to isolate b one of, um, one of the variables. Uh, in this case, I would just pick b. It doesn't matter. You can also do the exact same thing with a. So let's go ahead and factor out a b here. That's going to give us 3a plus 2. And then plus an a equals 42. So my goal is to isolate b and write it totally in terms of a. Make sense? Okay. And I guess you can call this the first method. So to do that, I'm going to subtract a from both sides first. b times 3a plus 2 is equal to 42 minus a. We're going to subtract this from both sides. And then divide by 3a plus 2. So that's going to give us b in terms of a, right? So it's all good. But the problem is, how can you make sure that a and b are integers in an equation like this? Okay, so we got to do something called polynomial division. But the problem is, we have a negative a in the numerator and a 3a in the denominator. So you can't really divide while well, you can, but let's make it a little, little easier on ourselves. And here's how we can do that. First of all, notice that if I could make a negative 3a in the numerator, that would make things a lot easier. So that means I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And when you do that, you're basically just going to multiply the numerator. And then that's going to give you 3b equals, by the way, I forgot to say, but anyways, I can hopefully remember that for the second method, 126 minus 3a divided by 3a plus 2. And then continue in this manner, but go ahead and write this first. Because my goal is to make the numerator a multiple of the denominator. Does that make sense? So that I can uh, divide easily. Obviously, you can do polynomial division, but I just like doing it this way. Hopefully, you like it too. Now, notice that negative 3a divided by 3a is negative 1. So we should be getting negative 1. But what, do you, what should you have in the numerator? Think about multiplying this by negative 1. You should be getting negative 3a minus 2, right? That's exactly what you need. So let's go ahead and write this negative 3a plus 126 as negative 3a minus 2. But we have 126. To make up for that, let's just add 128. It's basically equivalent to adding 2 and subtracting 2. But I did subtraction first. Make sense? OK. Now divide that whole thing by 3a plus 2. And now we can go ahead and separate it like this. 3b equals negative 3a minus 2 divided by 3a plus 2 plus 128 divided by 3a plus 2. This is really cool because, first of all, this is divisible by the denominator. Second, we have a remainder, and we can basically go off of that. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Write the negative 3a minus 2 as negative 1 times 3a plus 2. That kind of explains why they're divisible, right? And then we can go ahead and cancel out the 3a plus 2 and come up with negative 1. That negative 1 is going to be a little helpful. And I, by the way, I just realized the first method is going to be a little longer, even though it seems more intuitive, right? I don't know. You'll decide. Now, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put 1 on the other side. But I don't have to do it because all I want is this a and b to be integers. So... We can kind of do this. For which a values this is going to be an integer? Once you find that, you plug it in and make sure that that sum is also an integer. Make sense? Let's go through some of the cases. For example, divisors of 128. Obviously, 1 is a divisor, right? It's a divisor for everything. But if 3a plus 2 is equal to 1, that means 3a is negative 1. That's not going to give you an integer. So skip that one and then go to the next one. How about 2? 
If 3a plus 2 is 2, then a0, a0 is going to work. And when you divide 128 by 2, you're going to get a 64. Negative 1 plus 64 is 63. That works too. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So that means for a equals 0, we get b equals, what is 63 divided by 3? 21, right? So that's going to give us a solution. And from here, obviously, a plus b is going to be 21. Remember, we were looking for a plus b. And this is one of the values. Make sense? And you can continue in this manner, like the next one, since 128 is 2 to the 7th power. You knew that, right? Uh, all the divisors are going to be powers of 2, like 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, all the way up to 2 to the 7th, and including that, of course. So the next one is going to be 4, right? So if this is a 4, then 3 equals 2 is not going to work, so we have to cancel these out. 8, 3 equals 6 is going to work. Yes, 8 equals 2. But then, 128 divided by 8 is 16. Negative 1 plus 16 is 15. Yes, that works too. Awesome. This means b is equal to 5, and their sum is 7. That's another value that works. Nice. Cool. But these are all the positives. And of course, you're going to continue in this manner, and this is probably going to take a while. And the rest is left as an exercise for the reader. Don't you hate those sentences when they appear in a textbook? I'm like, come on, give me the solution. Okay, anyways, you get the idea, but you can definitely continue. This is not too hard. Hopefully not. Let us know in the comment section. But I just want to talk about the second method real quick. But of course, you also have to consider the negatives. Don't forget, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8. And notice that not all of these are going to give you good integer values. For example, negative 1 is going to be work because that means a is negative 1. But if you divide 128 by negative 1, you're going to get negative 128, negative 129. Guess what? That's divisible. Cool, cool. That's just another value that works. I didn't even know. But if a is equal to negative 1, then b is going to be negative 43, I think, right? Negative 129 divided by 3. Yep, looks like it. Okay, so that's just another value, and a plus b from here is going to be negative 44. That gives us a negative value, but don't worry. No worries, it doesn't say. It just said a and b are integers. So let's quickly take a look at the second method, and then we'll finish up, okay? So the second method, even though it seems a little harder, it might be a little easier in some sense. So here's how it goes. I'm going to try to factor a or b here. Let's just try... And you know what? I want to write the product first, okay? Allow me to write it this way first. Then I'm going to factor out an a. It's going to give me 3b plus 1. But this continues with 2b, or not 2b. Yes, I wanted to say that all the time. So now, we can't follow up with 2b, so we kind of have to do something. Here's a couple choices. You can change this to a 2b by playing around with the a, or you can change this 2b to a 3b. How? And what should I multiply 2b? by to get 3b, right? Because I do need a 3b, but I have 2b. So I can go ahead and multiply 2b by 3 over 2. Makes sense? But you can't just do that, right? So here's what we should do instead. Start with 3b. I think that's the more better approach. I do have to I do have 2b, so I have to multiply by 2 thirds. Now it's good. But wait a minute. I do need 3b plus 1, but notice that this is 2 thirds. So if you add 3b times, no, not 3b times. Okay, I do need 3b plus 1. So if I, yes, if I add 1 times 2 thirds to this, I'm going to get 3b plus 1, yes, by factoring. But I, it just means that I have to add 2 thirds to both sides. Wait a minute. 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds? Of course. Now, here's what you get. This is probably quite complicated. Anyways, I take out a 2 thirds and then that gives me 3b plus 1. And 3b plus 1 is a common factor. I kind of factor out it and I get a plus 2 thirds equals 42 plus 2 thirds. You don't have to add those because next I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. You see, that's the trick to turn this into an integer. And then you will proceed the exact same way. This is going to be 126 plus 2, 128, and you know the rest. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.